you'll get to see why I, I we why why we've watched that. But let me tell you a bit about the the movie. So Lucy is an ordinary girl, but then um, she's being used for to traffic drugs uh, without her consent. So they're put in a pouch and it's put in her tummy. And then she gets in a fight and they begin to leak into her system. So what the movie is claiming is we use 10% of our brains. I researched, that's not true. That's just movies, it's a lie. So what happens is as the, the drugs are getting into her system, the percentage of her brain, the percentage that she's using begins to increase and grow. And so she's able to do things that are not ordinary anymore. As you're seeing there, at one point she's able to control people Another time, she's able to control the elements, you know, like the wind and all that. Time stops, and many things keep happening to the point, oh, she even learns Chinese in one hour. And then when, <laughs> when after, after it goes like that up to 100%, and what happens at 100 is she becomes all-present, all-knowing, all-powerful. What does that mean? Ah... One plus one, do that math. And, and, and there are movies, there are, there are many movies with this idea. Um, one of them is called Limitless, um, feature starring the, the awesome Bradley Cooper. And this movie, that's a whole idea. That they're saying that we have the power inside of us, but we just need to know how to tap into that power, and then we can reach our full potential or our full capacity, and we become limitless. So the underlying message really is we have the power inside of us and and and, and what they're, they're simply saying these two things if we maximize the skills and abilities we have we become the best versions of ourselves and they also say if we work hard enough and apply ourselves we can accomplish great things in short we have the power and today there are so many phrases that sound like thought we have the power but this is what they are saying really and, and, and there are a couple of them, and I know you have seen them, you have printed them on your T-shirts, you have printed them and put them on your desks, in your houses, you know. Even, hey, there's another one I had forgotten, your email as you're signing out, regards, Kendi Mwenda. We have the power. Anyway, this, they go like this. The power is within you. I am limitless. Every human is unlimited. And you can have, become, and do anything that you want. Self-help gurus, motivational speakers, um, team builders, HR trainers, like all this, plus pop culture, pop culture is popular culture, pop culture icons tell us the same thing, that we have the potential, or the potential is in you, and all that you have to do is activate it. But over time, as I've had this, and as we've had these phrases and these ideologies, I have come to wonder, what do they actually mean? Number two, what truths can we glean from them? And the third thing is, what issues are lack, lacking in the shadows? Is this all? Is this the whole truth? So for our visitors, and thank you for being here. If you're looking for a church, your home. I pray, I pray you found this is your home. Welcome. But if you've not been here the whole month as we've been doing this series, which is called... Yes, yeah, so what, what, this, what, what this series is about is we have been considering many catchphrases and many ideologies that have become prevalent in our culture today and they've become a cultural lingo. And then we've spent time interrogating them and seeing, hey, what's the truth? Is there a truth in this? The first week we did? So our media, media hold to kidogo, nishike watu wenye, hawakuandika notes. Speak your truth. The second week we had? YOLO. YOLO. And the third week, which was last week? Do what makes you happy. And there was a lesson we were drawing from it. What was God saying? Instead of do what makes you happy, is God is after your and not your happiness. Wow, good job. Um, <laughs> so if you've not gotten an opportunity to, to actually listen to, to, the, to the sermons, they are, all of them are, in our, are on our YouTube page. And even for this one that we are going to do today, I'm encouraging this is what Papa Kilo says, chew over that word, over, you know, chew it, chew. What you, he says what you've gotten here, by the time you're living here, it will be 20%. So over the week, listen and re-listen until these words come alive. Um, and before we, before we go any further, allow me to pray as we now get deep into the word. Our loving Father, we are so grateful to be here. The Lord, we've already 
seeing that you're not a God of mistakes or coincidences. So, Lord, you actually wanted us to be here and to listen to your word. Lord, I pray that everything that you've prepared, that we will receive it with open hearts, that our hearts will be fertile soil, that it will multiply 60, 80, and 100 fold for the glory and honor of your name. Lord, I'm praying against any distractions, and I'm praying that, Lord, you will use me as your mouthpiece. Lord, in case you need to disrupt the plan that I had, I allow you. May the Holy Spirit speak to me and through me. Heavenly Father, we love you and we worship you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, so today I want us to get into another phrase, and this is, I have the power. So let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me take us back. So around, around 19, the 1960s, a movement came up called the Human Potential Movement. And this movement was developed around the concept of maximizing untapped potential that lay in each of us. And then we carry forward 40 years ago, another one came up called the Self-Help movement and this one is was focused on improving self or self-improvement and the belief in this movement is that there is immense good in each individual and we simply need to unleash it for the sake of the world and then number two there was a there is sorry the ability to solve any problem and lift the world off its mess and all this is in humans and I know that these phrases, they sound incredibly noble. And even to some extent, you know, they sound godly. And I know we even have scripture to back this up. Some you can say it at a heartbeat. And I know you know these scriptures. So Genesis, let's go to Genesis, where God reminds us that we are created in God's image and likeness, and that he blew his breath into us. Surely, eh. we are the only creation that has God's breath. Psalms 8.5 tells us that God made us a little lower than the angels. Then Psalms 82 reminds us that we are gods. We are sons of the Most High. But even the word of God is true. Let's start from there. But is this the full story? Are we gods? And you know, little, Is that just the full story? So I want us to turn to scripture and see a couple of people who tapped into their great potential. And, you know, we get some lessons from these guys. So the first story is from Genesis 11, from verse 1 to 8. Now the whole world had one language and a common speech. Verse 2. As people moved eastwards, they found a plain in Shina and settled there. They said to each other, come, let's make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They used bricks instead of stone and tar for mortar. Then they said... Come, let us build ourselves a city with a tower that reaches to the heavens so that we may make a name for ourselves. Otherwise, we will be scattered over the face of the whole earth. Verse 5, but the Lord came down to see the city and the tower the people were building. Verse 6, the Lord said, if as one people speaking the same language they have begun to do this, then nothing, will, what, nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. Come. Let's go down and confuse their language so that they will not understand each other. So the Lord scattered them from there over all the earth and they stopped building the city. This is one of the stories I got to hear when I joined. Okay, not when I joined. I feel like I was born in church, but my parents took me to church very early. But this is one of the earliest stories I can remember from Sunday school. And it's a story of the Tower of Babel. So I know, and when I heard this story, I was so confused. I was like, they say God is good. These guys were not doing anything bad. Like, they were just building a tower. What's wrong? Like, why, why are you so harsh on these guys? Like, what have they done? And then I want us to circle on two things before we go to another story. The first one is verse 4. In verse 4, um, the last part. Otherwise, we will be scattered over the face of the whole earth. They say, come, let, let's build a city and a tower so that we will, otherwise we will be scattered over the face of the earth. Uh -huh. Hold that thought. The second thing I want us to look at is verse 3. Verse 3. They say to each other, come, let's make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They use brick instead of stone, tar instead of mortar. So now uh, technology or building technology is now, it's, it's advancing you can see they're choosing to use tar and brick instead of stone and mortar. And why? Um, so I, I got to know. I didn't know before. But there's a guy called Josephus. He's, he's, a, he's a Jewish historian. 
and he explained that the purpose of this, um, of the, the, the brick and the tar, they are, they are more, they are stronger and then they are waterproof. So as they are building this tower, they are building it with waterproof material. And so what does that, so in case God decides to do what he did, the other in Noah's time, fanya ulicho fanya, wakati wa Noah, these guys are, they are safe, they are ready. So let me, let me, I, I didn't even give context. So this is chapter 11. When you go back to chapter 9, 10, that's the story of the flood. Uh, and the, whole, the whole earth has been wiped off. And the only family remaining is Noah's family. And now the sons have gotten sons. They are growing. They, like they are expanding. And so they are, they've, they've multiplied and they've gotten to a place called, now they've gotten to a place called Shina. That's modern day Iraq. And so now when they get here, they discover, hey, well, we'll be scattered. So now that's when they be, that's when they begin. So at least we have context. I want us to do another, another story, and I know this one. Hmm. This one you know it. But let me ask before we go to the next story. Do you think God was threatened by this guy's building? Like, was he shocked? Like, hey, you guys have a lot of potential. You know? Do you think that was it? No. And then um, the other thing is everything that these guys had. It's God who had given them. And then you, you're also wondering, they're building a city in unity. Like, that is unity of believers. We are building together for a common good. They didn't even need you. You and these guys had it secure for themselves. So you're wondering, okay, God, wait, why? Uh -huh. So the second story. Another story. This is a story of Lucifer. Okay. Lucifer or he's a, he's a fallen angel. He's one of, he was one of those big, big angels with high ranking. He's also called the, the star of the morning. And what this guy begins to do, um, Lucifer, he, he realizes, eh? first of all, let me, let, me, let, me, let me remind you, he saw God. He was in the presence of God. He saw God in all his majesty, glory, beauty, and power. But then this guy he discovered, hey, why, why, why do we need to praise and, you know, this, why? It can also be me. So he wasn't content with worshipping God. And he wanted to build a name for himself. So let's go to Isaiah, chapter 14. You said in your heart. So, first of all, watch out, there's a repeated word. You, you'll see the repeated word. You said in your heart, I will ascend to the heavens I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit enthroned on the mount of assembly on the utmost heights of Mount Zaphon. Verse 14. I will ascend above the tops of the clouds. I will make a name like the Most High. What's the word? I. So today, we, wait, let me ask a question before I get that. What's the Holy Trinity? God the Father, God the Son. God the Holy Spirit. There's something else called the Luciferian Trinity. And that is myself and I. So I hold that thought. Let's go back to the story of the Tower of Babel. So there are two things. There are two things I want us to, to look at. Why was God so displeased with these people? Why? Why did he come so hard on them? The first thing that is important. So I want us to Genesis 1, 28. We, we start to see where all this is coming from. Genesis 1, 28. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. And then he said, Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Fill the earth. He told them, Go. Like, everywhere. Fill the earth. So you have to scatter. There's no option. And subdue also means, no, take charge of it. And so already we are starting to see a repeated theme of disobedience. They disobeyed in the Garden of Eden. Now they are here. The flood has happened. These guys are not learning. What are they still doing? Disobeying God's command. In fact, they say um, uh, in, verse, in verse, 11, verse, 11 of, no, verse 4 of Genesis 11, they say, come, let us build ourselves a city. Otherwise, we will be scattered which is directly opposite to what God was saying also in Genesis 9-7. I want you and your descendants to have many children so that people will live 
everywhere on earth. The other thing, these guys were div devising strategies to shield themselves from God and you know, elevate themselves to the point where they don't need God. They're making a, 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 a flood-proof building. There's nothing, nothing can stop these guys. And we're seeing something there. They wanted to make a name for themselves. In, in fact, verse 4, go to verse 4, build ourselves a city. Uh, oh yeah, there. So that we may make a name for ourselves. There it goes. At the heart of their motivation, really, was what? Self. Me and I. This guy is actually knew if they come together, they could do it. They knew that they had the potential. They knew that they had the power in them. They said, we have the power. Back to this guy called Lucifer. So Lucifer has come up with a very diverse plan. The one that he fell for and he was eternally doomed. He wants us to get into the same trap, to make God's creation fall for that same thing, the trap of I. So that's why today everywhere we turn, we can't help but hear I being thrown around. You've had self-care, self-made, self-preservation, selfie, uh -huh, self, self-what? Eh, self-indulgence. <laughs> There's a lot of the self, a lot of focus on ourselves. And I also want to answer... Self-worth. Hey. I want us to, to look at other quotes that, as I've said, in fact, some of them were printed in my classroom in high school and they were put on the walls so that you get motivated and remember that you have the power in you. So I want us to go through some of them. One is from Will Smith. Aye. Hey, come back. Everything that you have had the whole week, forget it for now. Greatness, if you're floating, you're on the right track. Hallelujah. Amen. Greatness is not this wonderful, godlike feature that only the special among us will ever taste. It's something that truly exists in all of us. The second one from a guy called yeah, Roy T. Bennett. Believe in your infinite potential. Your only limitations are those you set upon yourselves. Hey. Then there is one from a guy that is an icon. This guy, the, the man, the myth, the legend himself. Kipchoge. If you believe in something and put it in your mind and heart, it can be realized. No human is. I know we've printed t-shirts, haven't we? We have. We have. And now, no, for, for gender, gender equity. I want us to watch a video by the one and only we, Oprah Winfrey. But no matter what challenges or setbacks or disappointments you may encounter along the way, you will find true success and happiness if you have only one goal. There really is only one, and that is this, to fulfill the highest, most truthful expression of yourself as a human being. You want to max out your humanity by using your energy to lift yourself up your family, and the people around you. Theologian Howard Thurman said it best. He said, don't ask yourself what the world needs. Ask yourself what makes you come alive and then go do that. Because what the world needs is people who have come alive. Mm. In fact, with the, with the instrumental in the background, after that you feel like saying, Sawa, let's give our lives to Christ. You know, it sounds, it even sounds very deep. Even the, like she's, the way she said it, but I've already heard some of you say, I, huh, we, what, Max, what? And maybe, let me, let me even give you examples of things that we've also engaged in, or the things that we've consumed without knowing, and that's the same thing, because we see this and we're like, yeah, but there is a truth, there's actually a truth in that. The first thing, I don't know how many read The Secret. Uh, I, I see them, huh? I see them. The reason why I didn't read it, my teens teacher, teens class teacher told me, don't read that book. I said, no more. Say no more. My parents told me, don't read Harry Potter and Goosebumps. I didn't read. I'm happy I didn't. Anyway, so this book was popular. It, it became popular. Um, it was written, I think, in 206, and it became very popular. And, 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 and what the book is simply saying is you can become the master of your destiny and the captain of your soul. And through the laws of attraction and the power of positive thinking, you can become anything you want. Sawa, you're not a reader. You didn't read this. But you're in, organi you're, you're in an organization or a school. 
they bring motivational speakers, self-help gurus, you know, um, this, this guy is uh, in, your, in your organization. So in the first service, I saw those people. So how many have heard the Landmark Forum? Mm -hmm. One, two, three. Let me tell you, everyone who said yes, there, there are jobs. Hmm. These guys, these guys are in good jobs. <laughs> what I'm saying that is, I researched, that thing is $800 for a three-day thing. <laughs> Silver method, life spring, sour. Yoga and transcendent, transcendental meditation. Hmm? Yoga. All these things that I've said, they're from a broken humanistic ideology packed in self-development. What's the word again we're seeing there? Self. Self-development. The word is self. Okay, Sawa, you're not in Kina Silvia's organization uh, or Kina Christine's organization. Or you didn't read the book. This one I know. This one you've seen. Social media. There's a word. There's a buzzword that has been going around. Huh? You see a photo of someone in Diani and then over there you write on the comment. Manifesting. We have manifested husbands. We've manifested Diani. We've manifested a car. Eh? Manifesting. Eh? A house. And you know what it simply means? It simply means that it's up to you to make these things happen. That's what manifesting means. That's what it means. So allow me to give a disclaimer first uh, before we even go on. There's nothing wrong with inner strength, the will to succeed, and also maximizing your potential. All these are God-given attributes. Everything that we have, our intellect, our abilities, our skills, our influence, everything that we have, God has given us, and they're completely commendable. But the challenge is this. Humanity has in is increasingly seeing itself as a solution to its problems. By your effort, your own potential, your own striving, you can reach the heaven. And we've just become like the people of the Tower of Babel. We're making a name for ourselves. And it doesn't matter if we're disobeying God, but as long as I'm building my tower high enough where it's floodproof, where even God cannot take it down. And then if you don't really need God to help you reach the heavens, if you don't need God to help you become all you can be, if you don't need God to maximize your potential, the question is, do you really need God? And so this has become the beginning of what is called the secular humanism. How I understood it when I read about it, it's just simply atheism. Like this, you don't believe in a deity or a, or a God or religion, you know. And it's, it's, out of, it's a philosophy in our culture that elevates critical thinking compassion and ethical moral reasoning as a solution to man's issues this ideology is very subtly and slowly but surely edging god out of the center of our existence and it has placed us squarely in the middle come let us make a name for ourselves it's about me myself and i and i want to suggest that of all the things that we've covered this this month this one is the most prevalent and it's the most dangerous why it sounds very philosophical. In fact, when you had opera, Trumpet, you're like, hey, you, at Trump, you're like, yeah, there's something like, it almost sounds truth. In fact, if you've, it's very inspiring. It makes you want to get out of that and you know, conquer the world and get everything that you need to get. And you've even had, let me, let, me, let me say another one that you've had, and you've even said it, and you've said it's a Bible. What verse do you know? I know God helps those ones who help. What verse is that? self Phoenician chapter 1, verse 1. Hmm? And, and so, <laughs> some of us have become, let me not say some of us, most of us, or many of us today, are living like the people of the Tower of Babel. When it comes to the work of your hands, when it comes to, you know, your life, your relationships, your marriage, your education, your kids, we have consciously or even subconsciously become convinced that it's only the effort that we put in that will make things work. And so what we do is we spend our lives making that, building that tower of Babel. And it's not just that, not, not even those other things, even our own walk with God. It's become about me, myself, and I. And so that's why even Christians can't ask, hey, I think I saw you somewhere. Mm, uh, that's my, my relationship with God. That is personal relationship with God. Hey, I didn't, I didn't see prayers today. Oh, sorry. That's why it's, it's about me. And, and even to the point where 
when God gives us the instruction, the great commission, that's why it's even hard for us to evangelize or even speak to others about God. Because you become, Pastor Kilonzi actually says, you become the end user. And that's what God's intention. He says, go into all the world. But you've become the end user. We've become the end users of everything that God is giving us. It's about cushioning me. You know, it's about my family. Everything revolves around me. And that's why it's very easy for us to spend our days praying for our jobs, praying for good jobs, praying for clients, good business, uh, a, a spouse, kids. But the moment we get them, the first casualty for us becomes attending church, serving God, tithing, offering because we're not completely persuaded that god is able to do this like we've not fully put our trust in him and so we buffer ourselves against god and determine like this guy is in the tower of babel to rely on ourselves and to work with our hands and to make a name for ourselves self here's the situation the irony of the people the situation of the people at the tower of babel let me tell you everything they wanted for themselves God wanted for them even more. Pastor M has often reminded us that the plan, that God's plan for your life is better than anything that you have planned for yourself. In fact, it's very spiritual. Like That's a very biblical statement from Ephesians 3.10. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than we ask or imagine. You know, you hear people saying, in my wildest dreams. Like when they say wildest dreams, it, you know those things, like now my wildest dream own a chopper. That's wild. You know, like wildest, even your wildest dreams can't compare with what God has in store for you. That's what he's saying when he says, immeasurably more than we can ask, what you've asked, or even what you have imagined, or what you have dreamt. So God had a, God had a better, infinitely better plan for them than they realized. And that's why we see immediately after, we've, we've, we've seen chapter 9, 10, 11, and then 12, we see God's plan for them. And now you, let, let's read it. And then re remember to, to, to see that word that we keep saying. So Genesis 12, 1 to 3. Go from your... Oh, the Lord said to Abraham, Go from your country, your people, your father's household to the land. I will show you, verse 2. I will make you into a great nation and I will bless you. I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. Verse 3. I will bless those who bless you and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all the people on earth will be blessed through you. Let's compare God's plan. Their, their plan was in chapter 11. Let's see God's plan in chapter 12. Their plan, they wanted a city. What did God want for them? Nations and the whole earth for them. They wanted a name for themselves for today. And then God wanted a name for them for generations. So God says, I myself will make your name great. Even goes ahead in Genesis 26, 4 to 5, God says, I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, and I will give them all these lands. And through your offspring, all the nations on earth will be blessed. Wow. Can you see why God stopped that thing in 11? Can you see his compassion towards this guy? God was not being a mean God by taking that away. He knew, I I have a better plan for these people. And if I don't disrupt these plans and these things that they are building, these guys will never, these guys will never get here. And so left to our own devices, <laughs> we miss out on God's incredible plan for us. And so I want to nullify that statement that says, no human is limited. I want to tell you, outside of God, every human is limited. No matter what you have, every human is limited. And I don't want us to fall into that enemy's trap. This is a trap that he fell for. Kitambo, and even now, he wants us to get into that trap. The lie that you can do it on your own. He wants us to get into that lie that you are enough. The lie that you have what it takes to build a life and a future for yourself and your family. And the lie that you have infinite potential, infinite goodness, infinite capacity. And if you just tap into it, you can accomplish anything. He wants to feed your mind with lies about self-confidence, self-reliance on yourself. I had it being said somewhere. What the, and, and then we know, knows he has no hold on us. Uh, it's secure. The battle... Like it's done, it's done, it's cast in stone. But he knows that he can distract us so that we don't get into what God wants us to be. And so he distracts us with so many thing, things. And he wants us drowned in popular culture, listening to popular voices who will feed this delusion. Let me ask, 
What are you listening to? What are you watching? And then who are you following? <laughs> I love this. I, this is one of my favorite verses. In 2 Corinthians 10, 5, it says, We demolish arguments and every pretension that self, sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to God. Who are you listening to? He tells us, meditate on this word day and night. Read your Bible, pray every day if you want to grow. And some of us know what we listen to the whole week. You have meditated on a podcast. In fact, you know their lives. She's married to Nani, they fought with, they have children, even their husband, even, they didn't even talk last week. You know, they were, they were in Dubai and then you go to their post and write, manifesting. What a, huh? shock. What a shocking shock. <laughs> And so some of us are not, you, even, even when you're listening to opera or you're reading quotes, or even here people saying, God help. Some of you, I'm, I'm sure you've realized that that's not a verse today. God helps those who help. That's not a verse. But the reason is we have not spent enough time with the truth, enough time looking at the truth and feeding from the truth for us to realize when someone brings a lie, you're like, I, I know. Uh -uh. That one just doesn't sound. That one is off. That one is off. In bank, I'm told the tellers are given, I don't know, any bankers. If I get it wrong, please, I, I, I was told, I don't know. So they, they get the original currency and they interact with it so much that they can tell, they, like, this is looking, these guys know. And that should be the same thing for us. You spend so much time in God's word such that when a truth is peddled, you're just like, not for my father, I won't board, I'm not boarding. And some of us, the call today is unfollow those people. For some of you, even you didn't even know manifesting is wrong. This thing you like manifesting. Because you the people you follow, you remember when I told you follow and you will become. You follow, you become. It's been tested, it's been tried. Look at the disciples. Guys who are fishermen, guys who are not high-ranking people, they didn't even know the word. But by interacting and following a guy for three years, they could raise the dead, heal the sick. Follow and you will become. Follow and you will become. And so if it means for you to unfollow some people that no longer, they're no longer professing what you believe in, if it means for you to turn off that movie, that series that you've been watching, that surely, the things that it's propagating for you and your children has nothing to do with what is in God's word. Is that what it means? Unfollow, stop watching, listen to God's word. Our someone is 40 minutes. Imagine, 40. But you... 40 minutes becomes so long <laughs> you can't listen to it maybe God is saying sil silence those voices silence those voices and listen to the truth the one and the only Jesus therefore what is God calling us to, to into today I want to quote Jesus from his sermon on the mount hmm? first sermon hmm. thank you teacher Wamboy eh? Pastor Wamboy. Matthew 5 Jesus shares and says Blessed or blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Not two things, blessed or blessed and poor in spirit. Blessed or blessed. We have narrowed <laughs> blessings into happiness, material gain. That's why when I say that person is blessed, what, many times what we are referring to is that person has it going for them in terms of their career, in terms of their money. That's what, that's what it's even ingrained in us. That person is blessed. But in the Greek language, it, it meant far more than our idea of happiness and material comfort. It encompasses the idea of purpose and fulfillment. What is being poor in spirit? Blessed are the poor in spirit. You can also say blessed are the spiritually bankrupt. People who've realized that they are nothing without God, that even the little that they have, their mind, their ability, their resources, their relationships are completely meaningless outside the relationship with him and so i want you to remember this outside of god every human is limited outside of god every human is limited and why does spiritual bankruptcy really matter to god why because that's the only time you begin to be fully dependent on god and even says in his word a broken and a contrite spirit i will not reject that he has an infinitely better and bigger plan than anything that we have in store for him. Than what, I'm sorry, than what we have for ourselves, I'm sorry. When all he's inviting us into, it's just like, stop it, 
Stop making a name for yourself. Stop building a tower for yourself. I have something better for you. Jesus would be saying to the people of Babel and to you and to me today, do you really want a life of meaning, a life of significance, a life of real success? Rely less on you and more on me. Be cured of the reliance on self. Become totally and wholly surrendered to me. You must become spiritually bankrupt. David reminds us in Psalms that it's not our strength or effort that will do it. It says, unless the Lord builds the house, the builders labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the guards stand watch in vain. So today my invitation is, don't rely on yourself. I know it's countercultural, cultural. It's counter everything that you have been trained to do. But come into this place of rest where you rely and fully rely and rest in God. When he says, don't, you don't need an excuse. You're like, yes, I will not. When he says, go, say, I will go because he has a good plan for you.